31, welcome to example six. So we are told, hey, write the equation of the ellipse having a center at the origin, foci at negative five, zero, and five, zero, and a major axis of length 18 units. All right, so let's piece this together. I wanna to write the equation of an ellipse. So like last time, just like example five, you have a couple of options. You're either going to have x squared, excuse me, x minus h squared over a squared, plus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to one, or you're going to have x minus h squared over b squared, plus y minus k squared over a squared is equal to one. I'm not sure which version of the ellipse I'll have. I, I have to play with the, the traits that were given to me and see if I can figure it out. But before we get going into this specific problem, if you ever get one of these types of problems on your homework or on a midterm, can you really need to find the center and A and B. Those are the three pieces of information you need and then you can write me the equation of an ellipse. And when I look at the first part of this sentence, it says you have a center at the origin. Well, that's great. That means these are just gonna turn into x squared and y squared because it was technically x minus zero and y minus zero. So I'm gonna just simplify that a little bit right now since I have that piece of information. All right, give me a moment. So these equations are simplifying to x squared and y squared respectively. Again, I still don't know where the a is falling. I don't know if the a is under the x variable or the y variable, but I'm about to find out. This is you have foci at negative five, zero and five, zero. So at this point, I'm just gonna draw my own little x, y axis and see what I can glean from that. So here we go. All right, so I have a center here at the origin. All right, and I have a foci at five, zero. So I'll put a focus goes here. And I have another foci at negative five, zero. All right, now this is my center. I know that the distance from my center to my foci is C. All right, C is always the distance from your center to your foci. So in this case, since I'm going from zero, zero, right, the origin to five, zero, or zero, zero to negative five, zero, I can see that C is equal to five. So I'm picking up on that. Okay, the other thing I take note of is that the length of the major axis is 18 units. And we know that the major axis is always 2A, so we know that 2A has to equal 18, which is telling me A has to equal nine. And just so we're clear, the foci are always along the major axis. So actually, I can see that I have a vertex here at nine zero, and I say nine because A would be nine and I would move nine units away from the origin, okay? And I also have one down here at negative nine zero. Here's my other vertex, all right? And that distance, even though that looks like the number nine, oh, it looks like the letter A, it's supposed to be the number nine. Let me rewrite that. All right, this distance is always A units. All right, so I've got C is five, A is nine, and again, I know c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared, so let's go figure this out. All right, so c squared, oops, excuse me, 25 would be equal to nine squared minus b squared. If I simplify that a little bit, I'm gonna get b squared is equal to 81 minus 25, and 81 minus 25 is equal to 56. All right, so I know a is nine, making a squared 81. I know c is five and I know b squared is 56. So the last thing we have to figure out is just where does the a squared go? Where does the b squared go, right? a squared is 81, so does the 81 go under the x fraction or the y fraction? You know, b squared is 56, does that go under the y or the x? All right, well, if we take a look at this, since the foci were shifting horizontally from the center, right? I move left, excuse me, I move left and right and even for the vertex, I move left and right. Well, left, right is in the x direction. So that means the a squared is going to be under the x variable. So this is going to turn into 
x squared over 81 plus y squared over 56 is equal to 1. And that's ultimately the answer to this question. So I'm going to erase all of this because I don't need the rest of it. All right, I don't need the other form of the equation of the ellipse because I already got it. All right. So again, I just want to reiterate here. I went through, I had my origin. It's always the case where the distance from your, I shouldn't say I had my origin. I keep making that error in these videos. I had my center, which happened to be at the origin. All right, the distance from your center to your foci, or your foci, or a focus, man, I'm doing good with words tonight. So the distance from your center to a focus is always C units. All right, so that's where I knew C was five. They told me the length of the major axis was 18 units, and the major axis is always 2A. All right, so that means A is nine. Once I know A and C, I can plug into this equation and solve for B. I only solved for b squared because that's ultimately all I needed in this denominator here. And again, the reason I knew that a squared was with the x variable is because all of this shifting was left-right. It was horizontal. All right. So there we go. We got the equation of the ellipse based off of traits. With that, we're going to take a look at one more example. It's an applied problem. All right. So it's going to be a word problem in the context of an ellipse. All right. Thanks so much, gang. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.